and I'm making good money here, but I can't stand it. I'm dying inside. This will enable people to see the truth and I think they'll make a more informed choice. AD, he's setting his way, he ain't changing. 84 years old, you know what you got. And at three a.m. in the morning, she's just downstairs alone. The cloud of fire is going to come into the, the, the theater and is going to affect people. We should tell it's done. Well, you know, this is like any war. They've been killing our children. I think it's time for us to kill Planned Parenthood. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and thank you for joining us again here in Godspeed Magazine. I want to tell you that we are so honored to have guys that you probably can't not see at this point, but in case you've hidden under a rock and somehow managed to miss Unplanned the movie, this is both the directors and writing team of the movie, and this is Chuck Konzelman and Carrie Solomon. Guys, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for in inviting Godspeed us. Godspeed Magazine, it's truly a pleasure. And we were determined to have you here. It was. Uh, a bit of a jaunt going after it, but I feel like God had some specific plans to have you speak to the audience, and I really am looking forward to having our audience hear specifically what you have to say. Uh, in relationship to a point that I think Christians run away from, which is Christians need money too, um, can you guys kind of address the reality of why is it so important that Christian films that are truly high quality, like excellence devoted to God, why is it so important that believers get out there and actually go to the box office in relationship to what will happen in the future. Well, if they want to continue to see the types of movies that they want made, uh, that's the only way it happens. Uh, they have to help fund that industry. It doesn't happen. It's uh, there's this funny idea I think amongst a lot of believers that filmmaking is a hobby for those. And <laughs> it, it really isn't. I mean, on our first day of uh, principal photography shooting the movie, I looked at our our, our crew list and our crew was 110 people. And then there was oh. cast and uh, every, every member of our cast had to be flown to Oklahoma, which is where we were shooting. Wow. Even our Oklahoma crew, because we were shooting in Stillwater, most of them were uh, staying in hotels because they lived in Tulsa, they lived in Oklahoma City. So it's a, just a very uh, cash intensive uh, process. And even a, an independent film like we are, Doing something like this becomes a 13, 14, 15 million dollar effort by the time you make the film and uh, market the film. And unless that comes back at the box office, um, we don't get to do that again. Right, absolutely. And I feel like it's such an important point just because, I mean, ultimately we've been called to be faithful stewards and you guys turned God is not dead that you wrote from what, a million into a hundred million? I mean, you've completely delivered for the people and you, therefore we get to see you again. My family went to see God's Not Dead and the multiple succession. And I mean, again, I just, I wanna encourage all of you, please support these movies or you're not gonna see the major movie studios allowing us to have faith-based films that are of high quality. And it will be us, the viewers, the ones who are not at the box office that are responsible directly for putting us back into the cheesy films that all of you tell me so much you hate. <laughs> so, um, in relationship to the larger real depth of this topic though, Unplanned is at a moment in time, at a moment in scripture, at a moment that so many prophetic voices all over the body of Christ are talking about. And there's such huge odds. Harry Jackson said, this is a Joel 3 moment. God's out there to tell you, look, you come to the field and I'm gonna, this is the time. You better decide which side you're on kind of a thing. How do you guys feel like, what's at stake for the reaction to the unplanned movie? What's at stake for? <laughs> well, I, you know, I think that there's a time in history, multiple times throughout history where the Lord has raised his hand and there was a great urgency or the Jews going to the Red Sea. Mm. I mean, the sea doesn't part without the Lord. Obviously he knew he was gonna do that. And, and you know, and, it, and, and free the Jewish people, right? Amen. And there have been other things that have gone in through history. I think we live in one of those moments. I know that it's, uh, yeah. people have a hard time actually accepting that, yeah. but I think we're in a biblical moment here because what are we looking at? You're looking at the adversary is frantic. We've never seen this kind of eruption from the other side. You've never seen the screaming and the wailing and exactly. the condemning and the exactly. hatred and, the, exactly. and the, the, the bomb throwing and all these things, right? Please. And why is that? because I believe that the devil's time is short. The Lord has said, I am coming. Yeah. Now that could be 10 years, it could be 50 years, it could be 100 years, but that's a short time for the divine. 
Yes. And so one of the things I think is very important is for people to realize is that now the stakes are higher. When that happens, yes. everything means more. Yes. And the devil is about to lose his most precious thing. I tell people all the time that what's the first thing that happened after Jesus was born? And they look at me and they're like, um, and I say the slaughter of the innocents. Why? Because the, the, the Lord loves the children best. He loves the children, right? Life comes from children all the way up. They grow into men and women. And the devil wants to hurt the Lord. And he's been doing that from the beginning of his time that he was thrown out of heaven. He's been trying to kill the children. It's just what he does. Absolutely. He's about to lose that. Come March 29th, this is prophetic. I will tell you that the world as we know it is going to, it will never be the same again. Because when the Lord drops the Come veil, on. drops the chains, drops the, 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 opens the eyes of men and women, then they can't be closed. And so truth can then come forward. And what we have here is, if you know that that's a baby, no matter what. Absolutely. If you don't buy into the advertising, you know, we've been marketed. Yes. Planned Parenthood has marketed us the same way McDonald's markets hamburgers. Oh, it's a clump of cells. It's not really a child. Uh, people that abort their children just yesterday, we heard this, this horrible thing uh, that people that abort their children are heroes. Really? It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And, and in terms of the importance of this uh, issue, what was put on my heart very late in the production, and but very strongly, I believe, by the Spirit, was that abortion is an impediment to revival. There are so many people in this country that have been praying for years or decades for revival, but abortion is an impediment to revival. And when I thought about that, what became clear was that we can either crave the blessing of God or we can crave abortion, but we cannot crave both and desire both and possess both simultaneously as a nation, as a people. We, we have to choose and he's allowing us to choose. He's allowing, he's allowing us now, he's allowing the scales to fall from our eyes, us yep. to see it clearly yep. and say, now choose. I mean, this is a, you know, as for me in my house, kind of a moment. Do we want abortion so much that we're willing to sacrifice the blessing of God to go get it? And, and I think, again, going back to what we were saying, this is a biblical time. Moloch has risen again. Mm. Half of our nation is willing to take a live child. And certain states are pushing for, and this is the next step, 72 hours after a baby is born, you right. can still make a choice and kill that baby. Right. Now let's remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about taking a baby and murdering on the altar of Moloch. Completely. Well, this is not going to happen as Amen. far as the Lord is concerned. Amen. So he's going to show his people the truth. And when you know it's a baby, you have two choices. Kill it, keep it. Kill it, let it be adopted, that's fine. Keep it. There is no more, I didn't know. Because when the Lord shows truth, you know. And Absolutely. so this is the time we live in. And the devil is frantic on this because he knows he's gonna lose. We are gonna overturn Roe versus Wade. Amen. With all the screaming and the ranting and the raving, they know they're gonna lose. If you look at <laughs> Kavanaugh, when Kavanaugh was in the Supreme Court, the screaming, the ranting, the raving, the lying, this person did this to me and that, all of that, you can see, if you're looking at that crowd, and I hate to say this because these are human beings, but it was so obvious that they were under control of the adversary. I mean, Absolutely. all you needed to see was horns. I mean, they're scratching on and wailing on the, the Supreme Court doors. Against doors of bronze, no less. And they're yeah. just, they're I mean, just... there's irony there. And by the way, down the base of the Supreme Court steps, there's two fountains of children. This is, this is biblical we're Come talking on, about. And so unplanned is gonna change everything. And I am not taking credit for this. Chuck is not taking credit. This is the hand of the Lord. Amen. We wanted to make a Western, <laughs> okay? And that's true, we wanted to make a Western. We're more powerful, we're more comfortable making a movie about angry men with powerful handguns. It's just, <laughs> forgive us, we're but a work Lord, in progress. But the Lord has not let us do that. So basically he said, I want you to go do this. Incredible. It's a powerful moment. And I think people have to realize that when you come before your Lord, he's gonna say, well, hopefully, well done, my good and faithful servant. If he doesn't say that to you, he's gonna say, did you love? What did you do? Show me, show me, I love you, I love you, I love you, and I forgave you for everything, and yes, you're here. But I wanna go before God and, and have him say to me, 
You served me. Yes. And this is an issue in every church. You know, Abby's the first one to say, you know, when she was running her surgical abortion clinic, 70% of her clients would self-identify as Christian. Hmm. 70%. And Planned Parenthood has been, I mean, diabolically brilliant about going about this. When abortion was first legalized, they focused on a tiny, tiny sub-segment of the American population. They said, what we want more than anyone else is the teenage daughters of African-American Baptist ministers. That's who we want, that's who we want to recruit. And we were like, what, what is the, ra and the rationale was because if we can get them, they will subvert the congregation behind dad's back and he will never know. And wow. that population will now That's exactly find, what happened. And the only reason we know that is because one of the women who was recruited in that way and actually made it to Planned Parenthood's board before she found Christ uh, talks about it. No, I think we need to be angry. I mean, I think, and I think it's justifiable. I know as Christians we're supposed to love, but the Lord got angry when he was in the temple. It's time for us to get angry as Christians. You are sacrificing children to the adversary. Absolutely. Please, we need to stop this. And so I think people who are out there who don't really want to stand in front of an abortion clinic, or they're a little intimidated, or they don't have enough time, they're working hard just to feed their family, I think that's great. I think that's wonderful. You should be doing that. But you can go to a movie. Yeah. It's the cheapest way for you to be able to say to the Lord, I got my ticket. I supported this. Yeah. And we're not talking about it because we want to make money because that is not what this is about. This is about if we don't do well on the first weekend, they will bury this movie. And that is exactly what they've been trying to do. Let me give you an example of what some of the things that they've, they've done to us. They would not give us music for the movie. We had now, this is not a matter of like, multiple, we don't have enough multiple money. Multiple studios and, and we, we, had, we had all the money. We actually got far down the process. We'd agreed on prices for, you know, what the licensing would cost. And, the, and this is for, you know, big music. Cindy Lauper's Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. Boingo Boingo's Dead Man's Party. But these rights are owned and controlled by studios. We were 0, 0 for 9. But tell them the best part, listen to this. They asked us, is this a Christian movie? Yeah. Is, is this, it about abortion? Is this movie about abortion and is it a Christ, and is it a Christian? Excuse me, is there any other business? When I go up to the McDonald's window, do they say, do you, are you a Christian? Do you believe in this or that? And then refuse to serve. And I'll decide not to sell you a hamburger? This, this is not what America is about. I, I now, remember a specific baker who ended up in the Supreme Court because he the didn't decide to sell a cake. What happened? It just goes one way? It's, it's all it that way. It does go one way. We, we actually have multiple cable channels that won't accept our paid advertising. Lifetime, Hallmark, up, a lot of these, a lot of these they, they, they're they not accepting our TV ads. HGTV. We have radio stations that won't interview us. The, the industry itself has said nothing. They will not mention the name of our lead actress because they don't want any attention brought to this. Okay, Incredible. we can't spend money. This is not like most Christian movies that don't have the money. We've got the money to spend. They won't take it. Okay, Incredible. so this is, this is the tip of the iceberg. The MPAA, Closing us down on social media. Giving us an R rating. You know, we've actually, yeah. the most effective form of motion picture advertising that there is, bar none, is trailers that you see in a movie theater. Right. What most people don't realize is that a number of those trailers that you see, those are actually paid placements. You buy your right. way in to Absolutely. do that. We're not allowed to do that in by virtue of it being saddled with an R rating, despite having no nudity, no profanity, no violence other than the act of abortion itself. We are not allowed to, to place paid trailers in front of anything other than R-rated movies. And we, we, we're not gonna advertise before because we're not like those movies. But listen to this as well. By giving us an R rating, the industry knows. And by the way, I want everyone to know out there, I understand why people do not want Hollywood showing movies to their children. Absolutely. I don't want that to happen to my son. I try to monitor very carefully TV and movies, okay? Absolutely. Because they are, by the way, we've been in the business for 30 years. They are trying to corrupt your family. They are trying to have you into perversion. There is darkness. an agenda. There is an agenda. And it's relentless. However, they're also very, 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 the devil, the adversary is very shrewd because he knows that Christians for the most part, not all Christians, but most Christians will not, Mormons will not go to an R-rated movie. So what does he do? The church guidelines. He's forbid. gonna take the R and use Christian's virtue against them. Label it an R, even though it's not an R, 
but stop them from seeing the truth. Unbelievable. So now we're in a, Incredible. we're in this strange, we're down the rabbit hole on this, where in much of the country, a 15 year old girl can go and get an actual abortion without her parents' permission. But, but she can't, can't go, go to see, see a, a movie, movie that features one. Just by comparison, what was the rating on Passion of the Christ? It was that was an R. So this is not a new trend. This is how they, this is a silence and suffocation method. Right. We're not gonna well, let you see the truth. The right. truth's not okay. But we can feed you every kind of vampirella, little cute, poor little girl that was a vampire to your little smallest kids and have them empathize with the poor little vampire right. who's sucking the blood out of the person. Happy death, That's okay. Happy Death Day to You, which is a slasher film, will have a PG-13, but we've got the R. I happen to know I was just in the White House with some people from the DOJ who specifically asked me to bring them these, so I cannot wait to make the call for you. That's great. I will tell you this, I, I, I will say this. Jesus is God. Amen. They tried to get Jesus, they tried to get rid of Jesus 2,000 years ago. How did that work out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he ain't going anywhere. I got news for him. Come on. Our God is here. Just and he is going to do a mighty work here. He's going to raise his hand on March 29th and reveal to the world the truth. And he's going to put an end to this. But what he is saying, he's saying, you, 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 all the people of the world, you're my Jeez. army, you're my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my hands, my feet. You need to get involved too. And it can be in the simplest little ways, telling your friends, taking two people, going to somebody who's pro-choice and doesn't realize better, paying for their ticket, a multitude of ways. But if on the first weekend, we don't do okay, okay and above, they'll keep us for a second week. But what they will do is if we don't do well, they'll kill us and kick us out of the theaters. And then as good as this movie, no, as great as this movie is, because the spirit is on this movie, what will happen is I can make the greatest movie in the world. If no one sees it, it's dead. It's over, it's done. We're gonna get one chance to put an end to this abortion thing. And I'm telling you right now, wait till you see what the Lord does. Even though they've taken the advertising from us, even though the radio stations won't play our stuff, even though they took the music from us, even though they got rid of our lead actress three times, three different women until we found this girl, God is mighty. Word of mouth is going to go. The screen, literally when people are in the room, the cloud of fire is going to come into the, the, the theater and is going to affect people. We've shown this to 10,000 people across the country. Think of the mathematics on this. If you ask 10,000 people their opinion, would at least one, a hundred, a thousand people say, I didn't like this or that? We have not had one person come up and say, I didn't like this movie. Wow. Every single person is profoundly moved. And we are not good enough to do that. This is a Holy <laughs> Spirit thing. He's right, trust me, I know us. <laughs> We're just two knuckleheads from New Jersey. <laughs> Man, it's beautiful. I wanna encourage every single person who's listening to this again, we just us, just Godspeed Magazine audience, just us, we each tell three, five, 10 people, at least three, you gotta be at the movie. How simple is that? Think of the impact. Again, it's so simple. It doesn't need to be the top down, they can't control us. If the body of Christ stands together, there is no question about what's going to happen. Okay. If we actually obey Jesus, then we bring glory to him and to God by doing these kinds of things where we stand for God who gave the right to life, not some government that has no ability to give the right to life. Right. Now, the film, and I was gonna ask you about the enemy warfare, so you just nailed exactly where my question was going, but tell us also about the redemptive love. Let's say people have had an abortion, had a friend that had an abortion, they're thinking about an abortion. How is the film in terms of its uh, dealing with with people in the redemptive love of Jesus kind of side of this whole equation. It deals with people in different circumstances in different ways. Part of this film, ironically, is it's a love letter to the people who are trapped in the abortion industry. Mm. In, in Washington, we had Beautiful. one of Kermit Gosnell's former nurses who had gone through horrors. She came out of the screening and she said, all I saw up on that screen was love. So there's, it's about a way out, grace, the possibility of redemption for the workers. And that's Abby's, by the way, primary mission in life now. She runs an organization called And Then There Were None. She's successfully transitioned over 500 people, including about 10 abortion surgeons themselves, out of the wow. abortion industry. And what she does is she realized from personal experience, it's very hard to get a job when all you have on your resume is Planned Parenthood. So she raises temporary living expenses, three or four months worth of mortgage payment or 
apartment rent, car note payment, grocery money for people who are looking to get out. And then she uses her network to try to place them in other jobs, often loosely in the medical industry, maybe medical billing or somewhere else. So she helps she, she helps bring them out of Egypt. Wow. The primary ministry, for lack of a better term, I think is for post board of women and men, but especially women. And if they stay for the whole film, they will realize that there is grace, there is redemption, there is healing, this is not judgmental. No matter what they've been through, they haven't been as deep as Abby, because Abby had her two personal abortions, and she was complicit in 22,000 other abortions. As she puts it, she and took- she's the star of the film. And she's the star of the film. <laughs> I mean- and, you, and she goes deep. She has her dark night of the soul, and she has to confront with her husband at 3 a.m. in the morning. There's a point in the film where it actually looks like she's almost skated at a certain level. She's left Planned Parenthood. She's l trying to leave everything behind. Everyone around is, there ce is celebrating. And at 3 a.m. in the morning, she's just downstairs alone. Her husband is asleep upstairs, and she's just got to confront this thing. And he comes down and Ooh. finds her. And she just, he, she, he finds her weeping, and she's just like, what's wrong? And she says, 22,000, that's, that's the weight of my guilt. And it shocks even her husband at that point. And they go through the discussion of, she's like, how can I be forget, how? And it finally culminates that her husband, you know, you know, she says, how could God possibly forgive me? And she's angry at her husband for suggesting, her husband just goes like, says, because he's God. You know, that's his job. That's what, there's the, there's the fathomless ocean of the mercy of Jesus Christ waiting for any mm. man or woman who's undergone Amen. or been complicit in this process. And that's, that's the message of the movie. I'll tell you what we're Beautiful. getting from amongst the 10,000. Um, by the way, a lot of men, a lot of men, yeah. uh, 30, 40% And men. tough guys. And you know, a lot of guys who are, are crying awesome. and they're saying, you know, I was complicit. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. You know, I was young, I made a foolish mistake. This movie is not about condemnation. It's not about saying you're wrong, you shouldn't have done that, or you're right, or this person's good, this person's bad. It's not about any of that. Like Chuck said, it's about hope, it's about love, forgiveness, redemption. It's about learning the truth. When you have the truth, the truth will set you free. free. One truth. of the things that we've had is we've had women. I, I haven't had a woman from Chicago, I love this woman. And she calls me up after a screening, and she says from the age of 16 to 20, I had five abortions. Five abortions, what's worse, I mean, this is a whole story for another segment, but she was a good girl. They manipulated her, but that's a whole nother story what they did they should have gone to jail for. Wow. She was a good girl. She was a good girl. Wow. But she says, I hate Planned Parenthood because they have done this to me and millions, tens, hundreds of millions of women all over the world. And this is a lie. Don't change a word of this. Don't change a frame. Don't change a scene. This is going to change hundreds of millions of women across the world. And the reason for that is, she said, I had another woman come up to us and she said to me, 50 years or whatever, I did a bit in abortion 50 years ago. I've lived with it every day for my life. I saw this movie and now I'm free. We had a female psychologist tell us that, and we all know that there's this massive wave of antidepressant use out there yeah. in America. Yeah. And she told us, she said, 100% of my client base, my adult female client base who are on antidepressants yeah. are post-abortive. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence. It's terrible. So there's this tremendous, and, and what it is is this. As a society, we've been sold and told, you're not supposed to regret an abortion. There's supposed to be no grief, no shame, no nothing. It's not a sin, it's just it's a tooth removal, it's a polyp. Shout your abortion. And these right. women know better, their souls know better. And it's so it's unresolved grief. Mm -hmm. And so the point of this is to, for them to find grace, redemption, and then within their own families, their own social circles, their own church groups, become pro-life advocates who say to the women around them, the women most at risk, I made this mistake, but you don't have to. God willing, you can avoid a crisis pregnancy situation, but if you wind up there, let's find another way to deal with this because this lie that you can go walk into the abortion store and get rid of it and walk out 10 minutes later and the rest of your life is gonna be, is gonna be perfect. It is a lie. And, and as, as Abby says in the movie, her character says in the movie to a young woman she finally talks out of going in for, for an abortion after she's changed her life, she says, they can take away your baby, but they can't take away the memory of your baby. Oh. And that's, oh. That's, what, that's what women are faced with and they don't realize it on the front end. They go into the clinic and they're tremendously relieved afterwards. 
for 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, begins. maybe a week. And then the grief settles in. And what I really, wow. I, what I find really despicable is here you've got Planned Parenthood, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying like, for example, shout your abortion. Women who have abortions are heroic and so on and so forth. Suggested gifts for post-abortive women. What they're doing oh is, just gosh. think about this. They're marketing to these young girls of today. That's their market. They want to feed on them. But they're totally, literally forgetting intentionally. They don't care about the tens of millions, hundreds of millions of women all across the world that they've done this to. They're, they're discarded, right? Right. And they want the new meat, the new red meat, and then they'll do that and they'll keep doing it. This is seriously evil if you think about it. But what do we right. know? We know that Jesus, if a Judas had come to Jesus, he would have forgiven him. Mm -hmm. So there ain't anything that these women have done that's worse than betraying Jesus, our God. So they have to, that's what we do in the movie. We show people, look, this can be resolved easily. One of the things we say is we made the movie so that women and men who can go to the train station with their baggage, put their baggage down, wait for the train to come and get on the train, leave their baggage behind Amen. and get on the train to freedom. Come on. And we're getting thousands of women already are going and they're basically saying, I'm free. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go help women. I want other. We people went to, to know. a screening last night. We're a hundred miles yeah. from home because we drove two hours south of here. Oh, this is amazing. There was a woman that we knew socially, and we hadn't seen her in almost thirty years. And she came up to us and she hugged us so tight. I, she's small, and I thought she was gonna break us. And uh, she, since we had seen her, she'd had an abortion. Wow. And she's like, and she's like, I'm free now. I, I just, she was just celebrating because wow. she it's realized that it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, my dad, 84 years old, Jewish, atheist, so far liberal. I mean, so far, everything is allowed. He's coming around. That's how far to the left, right, he is. <laughs> so he calls me up one day and he says to me, I, I, what are you doing, baby? What are you doing? And I said, uh, he's a Jewish man. And uh, I said, dad, I'm making a movie. He hadn't noticed I was making a movie. Uh, and, he, and, and he says, oh, okay, send me something, send me something. So I sent him a clip from the movie, which is a scene where they're wheeling out the barrels with the refuse from the, uh, the clinic. The medical waste. Which, which happens is... to be what everyone doesn't realize is children. Bodies. And they don't get a funeral. They discard them and they burn them and they, they throw them away. And, and this, so this is a scene that gets reenacted in real life in a number of, of abortion clinics. If there are prayer warriors there, they will typically ask the truck driver to just give them a couple seconds and they will pray over that barrel for as close to a funeral as any of those children will ever see. So my dad says, I show him the clip, he puts it on while we're on the phone and the next thing I hear is, and he, he's not this way, he says, I, uh, 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 I can't talk, click. Okay, next day he calls me up and says to me, now remember what we're talking about here, 80, he's set in his ways, he ain't changing. 84 years old, you know what you got. And he says, uh, uh, Carrie, uh, this movie is going to change the world. He says, you showed us what we didn't want to see. Mm. And I was surprised when he said, you showed us what we didn't want to see. Crazy. Why didn't he say, you, you showed me? He said, us, because he's talking about the whole group, the, or everyone that's pro-choice. He says, you showed us what we didn't want to see. We need to make laws to end this, this, this abortion thing. Wow. Oh. 10 seconds. And it changed somebody who was that way his whole life. And he ultimately meant what he was ultimately saying is once you see it, True. once you know, you can't unknow. That's powerful. That's Jesus. Amen. When the truth hits you, say whatever you want. You now know right, wrong. Absolutely. And that's the power of God when he wants to save his people. So we are, what day, I'm losing my track of the day of the week. What, when is it? Wednesday, yeah. we're on Friday, we're open. You're launching Friday, two days Friday. from now. Two days. Yes. <sighs> Thank you. So in two days, we're going to the box office to support this. I know of a church in San Diego tonight right now, which is my own personal family, is going with their pastor to some pre-screening something somehow, I don't know. There, we, what's <clears throat> happened is that a number of pre-release full screen buyouts have taken place. Buyouts all across the country. Yeah. yeah. People are so excited about the movie that they went and bought out their theaters. We have like 1,500 theaters out there that basically have bought 
people. And we only have a thousand Praise screens God. that we're playing on, so some of the screens are doing multiple pre-release screenings. Right. That's how. That's how that's much. Exactly the fire of the Lord, be. the Spirit on. is moving through the people. Amen. And He's basically saying, "I want you to see this." Yes. And I got guys, by the way, who don't go to the movies. I got real tough guys that I know, and they're like, "I'm going to see. On, what are you doing on Friday?" And they'll be like, uh, "I'm going to see a movie," and I'm like. What movie are you going to see? Because I know, because the way they're saying, I'm going to see this movie unplanned. This guy's six foot six, you know, wide as a truck. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, wow. It's on the way. I'm him. like, okay, we'll go with you. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm going to sit in the movie again. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. Uh, I want to tell you awesome. one more thing in terms of us and Godspeed Magazine modeling for what I hope you'll come with us in, which is we're going to do a fundraiser. I'm already decided I'm sitting here listening to this. We're going to do a fundraiser specifically for Abby's charity, for the workers who are coming out. Awesome. We're going to raise money for those That's people awesome. that need funds to transition with Godspeed Magazine. We're going to use the magazine and drive revenue there. Thank that, you, that because be great. I, I think there's going to be, there's going to be a, 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 an outflux. I was going to say influx. Like, there's, I think there's going to be a real wave of people. Um, Sue Maybe. Thayer, who was a former abortion clinic director, uh, in her writing this morning, she said, I believe that this first weekend, there's a tremendous number of abortion workers and Planned Parenthood personnel who are going to go see the movie. Curiosity is going to draw them. And I think that oh, large numbers of those men and women are going to, because, because they're, por <laughs> they're, portrayed, they're portrayed with love on the screen. I think it, their consciences are going to be pricked. Uh, large numbers of them are going to want to exit. Yes, and so that those those funds are really going to be precious. Now, in the we eyes do of the Lord. do a reach out at the end of the movie. You know, your life matters. If you want to get, uh, if you need help with your abortion, your pregnancy, to, if you need to talk to someone about or, your past you need to experience, talk to someone, or if you are an abortion worker and want to get out, you know, we we reach out to them at the end of the movie through various ways that they could actually get on with a life counselor at that moment. But the you, thing is, when you pull, you know, when you pull employees in this type of business out. One employee in this business is a big deal because oh, they can't yeah. replace these people. There's an ancient military proverb that says an enemy is more hurt by desertion than slaughter. Oh. Because what happens is, and we see this in Planned Parenthood, when one clinic worker leaves because their conscience won't let them stay, it tends to trigger these mini exoduses. It's their friends and my right. friend left. And what does that these mean? These are not bad people. These are no. people with families. We know a girl, I mean, I feel really bad about it. This happened like 15 years ago. She called us up and I did. I, I wasn't in the place I am now. And she called me, I, I was sympathetic, I prayed for her and everything else. But she said, I gotta get out of my job. And I said, and I'm talking to her and I'm not hearing what she's saying. She worked at Planned Parenthood. Oh, and wow. she says, I just had a baby boy. I love him, I adore him. I'm a single mom and oh. no one else will hire me. And I'm making good money here, but I can't stand it because I, I see it, it makes me, I'm dying inside. I don't know what to do. I mean, that's, that's powerful. These, this is not a bad person. So these are not bad people. It's just a matter of that they're in life puts us in situations. And I think that many of the times we make the wrong choices. Now, this will enable people to see the truth and I think they'll make a more informed choice. So I'm Amen. very, very excited about it. Amen. You will see, and I'm saying this in advance right now, I'm just deciding in advance, you'll see the one minute highlight reel of this interview and you'll see a link at the end of it that says unplanned in the link. And that link, every time somebody subscribes, half of our revenue, half of everything we do is gonna go directly to them from now on. So if we have a thousand of you, 10,000 of you, we're talking about $25,000 a month or more can go to directly that's to great. making this happen. And it won't just happen once. So it won't be great, that's nice, here's a check. It will be something where we can actually make sure that the funding continues for the next wave and the next wave and the next wave so we can keep the exodus going permanently until it's done. Well, you know, this is like any war. They've been killing our children. I think it's time for us to kill Planned Parenthood. Come on, amen. Oh, I love that. Guys, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having us. I appreciate us. it. God bless you. God bless you and your Chuck, work. God bless thank you, you, Carrie. Thank you so much. And since both of you bring the gospel of Christ so strongly, I can easily say Godspeed. <laughs>